Good morning, class. My name's Shane. Today I'll be talking to you guys about palynology. What is palynology? I asked myself the same exact question when I got assigned to this topic. To be honest, as soon as I looked up the definition, I wasn't too fond. But as I really got into research and details, it's quite amazing to see what pollen can do for both criminal and civil investigations. So let's get into it. What is palynology? Palynology is defined as a study of plant pollen spores and certain microscopic plankton organisms in both living and fossil form as well. While dealing with this study, we tend to originate from the studies of botany, plant biology, chemistry, environmental science, archaeology, landscape studies, and the list goes on. As a collective term for the material used in regard to this study, we refer to them as palynomorphs. Botanists may use living pollen and spores in the study of plant relationships and evolution. In addition, geologists may use fossil pollen and spores to study past environments, stratigraphy, historical, historical geology, and paleontology. So the history. Since the middle of the 17th century, pollen and spores have been highly subjected to study. The first individual who was given credit for undergoing studies on this type of evidence had gone by the name of Nehemia Gru. He was also recognized to be the one who established plant physiology and the idea that pollen had been essential to reproduction among plants. During the same period of time, the microscope had been developed in that revolution palynology studies forever. The microscope became the main tool to help study both fossilized spores and pollen, and this remains the same within this time period today. Its application to forensics. So, palynology has been a tool for criminal and civil cases for over 50 years now. It helps because it establishes links between two objects, places, or people. When gathering and analyzing pollen, you can see forms of pollen that are found in regards to two corresponding people, places, or objects. If you find the same samples of pollen, this will direct your investigation into the right direction and eliminate any other potential possibilities. Considering there are countless different amounts of pollen, if you can even connect just one pollen grain, it can be very vital information within the case. So... Another application. This helps determine the location of a crime scene. For example, and if an individual is killed within a certain area and moved, they'll have the trace pollen from the original area. Many times a body can be dragged from one spot to another as it collects various different amounts of pollen. If the body is found somewhere that doesn't contain the same samples of pollen that it's surrounded with, you can conclude the individual was murdered somewhere else. The body may contain very rare samples of pollen that are only found in specific locations. This benefits, the, this benefits the case, and it ties all the loose ends together. Another application. Palynology can also help determine what season and time of the year a crime has been committed. Considering certain pollens are only exposed during certain times of the year, it helps narrow down all of the results at whole. In addition, you can tell what region of the world an, inv an individual had been previously killed in after examining the collected evidence. Even different parts of simple gardens have a distinct difference between the areas. You can tell from one side to the other and where it originated from. As well, palynology, if they link up with an entomology team, you can link the time of death. So, all in all, it can serve multiple different purposes within crime scene investigations. And here I have a couple cases for you. So to start... This was the first time uh, palynology was ever utilized in forensics. It was 1959, and this happened in Austria. A man was uh, taking a trip, a vacation down the Danube, Danube River, and out of nowhere, he went missing. Though, as soon as this news popped up, they already had a uh, suspect in mind. It was his business partner that they never left each other's sides, they did everything together, and then... This is the first man they suspected or even wanted to ask questions to. So upon arriving to the man and talking to him, he had odd behavior, and this led to a uh, search warrant of his cabin. And once they got to the cabin, they found nothing special other than a pair of boots that were placed in the back corner. And as they were looking, they could see it had a, tracks of grass, pollen, mud. They were covered. So once they started asking questions, the man really, he was stubborn. He didn't have much to say, but they knew this was their guy, except they needed this evidence. So 
they took the boots back and they studied them, got them analyzed. And on the boots, they were there was a pollen grain 20 million years old from a hickory tree. And though it no longer exists, due to environmental changes, there is still found, uh, some found beyond the Danube River near certain rocks. And this is what sparked the investigation. So they go back to the man and they tell him, we know you killed this person. And we know where. Now you just have to show us what you do with his body. And eventually the businessman, his partner, he gave in and he brought him right to the gravesite. If this grain of pollen was never analyzed or found, this man would have been let out free and there would have been no questions asked. In addition, a Bellabon case, this was very local, happened right near Boston over in Deer Island. A local infant child was murdered in the Boston area and the remains were washed up in a trash bag. So pretty much they couldn't couldn't identify the girl at all and they just had no leads. It took it took months and months for them to get anywhere. And the first lead they ended up going for was a palynology team. This was months after trying everything else. And on the trash bag and the uh Bellabon's clothing, there were amounts of pollen that were found. And after it was studied, it was concluded that she was from the local area. And this eliminated so many suspects, and it just brought the investigation into the right direction and pointed out people who could have potentially murdered this girl. And as they collected this evidence, it narrowed down the results, like I said, and it was a very vital piece of information. So as time went on, and after eliminating suspects, they were actually able to find out who the killer was. And it was the ex-boyfriend of the mother of Bella Bond. His name was Michael McCarthy, and after he was prosecuted, he was charged with a second-degree murder with a uh, life sentence. So pretty much within these cases, the palynology teams, they didn't necessarily solve the case themselves, but it was a huge break when it just linked them into the right direction and eliminated any potential suspects or possibilities within the case. So palynology really is, it's an important factor and it's something that many people don't really think about, whether they're committing the crime or a part of a crime. It's just something that you would never cross your mind that something as little as pollen could really, could really get you in this much trouble. As well, it's a great form of evidence because it's basically indestructible. You can put your clothes through the washer 50 times and it will still be there. And that's why this makes it such a great piece of evidence and uh, something that really works within court. But as of all, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you.